Also, actually, then we can appreciate and enjoy that beauty more than we do now. Or if there's something unpleasant, the same thing. Or we can focus that on ourselves, you know, if we're getting upset or getting angry. Who is the me that's getting angry here? And that by doing that, we can also dissipate that reaction. So, uh, and then that will feed back into our emptiness meditation. So that's something we can do uh, in daily life through the day. And then at the end of the day, I think it's also good to finish the day on a good note. Of course, if we have time and energy to do a second meditation in the end of the day, great, fantastic. Um, many of us, of course, probably fairly tired from work, maybe social engagements in the evening. So if we can't manage to do another meditation session in the evening, I think there are at least two things we can do every day. The first before we go to bed, is to review our day. How did our day go? And then what we can do is pick the top three negative things and the top three positive things we did during that day. And with the top three negative things, we can do four, what's called the four opponent powers. Let me all write this on the board. We can first have sincere regret for having done that negative behaviour, so that will already weaken our habit of doing it. So the purpose of these four opponent powers, is, of course, is to purify our mind of our negative habits and negative imprints. So the first thing is to sincerely regret having done that, so that's already weakening the habit. Then... There is what's called reliance or sometimes called foundation. So this is basically to reaffirm the positive direction we want to follow our life. Because if we've done something harmful, we've sort of fallen down from our foundation, our direction in life. So this second one is about picking ourselves back up and reaffirming the positive direction we want to follow our life. And so that will also work to overcome that negative um, tendency. The third thing we can do is what's called remedy. So that's, think of some positive opposite action to the negative one. So for example, if today at work we said something nasty to someone at work, then of course a remedy could be, okay, tomorrow I'm going to apologise to them. So very practical. Some positive opposite. Um, if we can't think of some positive opposite action, then any positive action with a motivation of wishing to overcome that negative behaviour, can be effective. And the fourth thing is resolve, is to make a strong determination not to do that negative behaviour again. Now here, of course, we need to be practical. If the negative behaviour is something we do maybe many times every day, then there's no point in saying, I'm never going to do it again. It's just not going to happen. So if it's some stronger habit then set a time limit and say, OK, uh, for the next day, I'm not going to do that thing. If that's way too difficult, for the next hour, I'm not going to do that thing. Way too difficult, for the next 10 minutes, 5 minutes, I'm not going to do that thing. Pick an amount of time that with effort, normally you can manage, and then slowly, slowly, you can extend it from 10 minutes to 30 minutes to an hour to a day, a week, a month, the rest of your life. So that's a, a good way to break even strong habits. So if we do that, go through those four points very quickly with the top three negative things at the end of the day, it's a very good way to really deal with them, let go of them, and then really to overcome, start to overcome negative habits. But equally important, maybe more important, focus on the top three positive things we did during the day. Because unfortunately in our modern society, we're always focusing on the negative. And not just focusing on the negative, we're identifying with the negative. That's why we have so much low self-esteem and so forth. So we need to have a balanced view of ourselves and others. So therefore it's important to also focus on the good things we do. So pick the top three good things we did 
and then we can rejoice in having done it and make a strong determination to continue to do it the following day. And that way we can strengthen our positive habits. So this is something I think is very useful to do at the end of every day to strengthen our positive habits and to weaken our negative habits. And then there's one last thing that we can all do at the end of the day, and that is when you go to bed, lie down in the bed in the, what's called the Shavasana, the corpse posture, lying flat on your back, feet a little bit apart, hands to the side, palms upwards. And then just lie there and just notice sensations anywhere in the body associated with your breathing emphasizing relaxation. So this is a mindfulness exercise. It's a shamatha practice, particularly emphasizing relaxation, just noticing sensations in any part of the body associated with the breathing. So this is a good way of releasing tension from the day in the body and the mind. It's a mindfulness practice. It's a shamatha practice. Um, do that as long as you can maintain some level of alertness. When you start to get very sleepy, maybe two or three minutes or ten minutes or whatever, then just mentally note, okay, my meditation's come to a finish now. Move out of that posture into whatever posture you use for sleep. So this is an excellent way to finish the day. Mindfulness practice, releasing any tension, and it's a good transition into sleep. So this is something we can do, I think, at the end of every day. Um, two last things. Um, in terms of this Vipassana practice, um, the book I recommend, and I've already mentioned this, is How to See Yourself as You Really Are from His Holiness Dalai Lama, which I think has been translated into Hebrew. So I think this is a very good book to start. It's very clearly written. It talks a lot about the things that I mentioned. Um, and so I think this is a very good book to begin uh, reading about this Vipassana practice. Um, and then also, I have my own website. Uh, glensvenson.org and on there I have a lot of audio from other talks I give and retreats I've given um, and also there's a lot of materials, charts and all sorts of things so whatever you find there help yourself, hopefully there's something useful for you there um, also I think one or two people were mentioning earlier uh, about retreats and um, the, the next retreat I'm going to lead actually is in March beginning of March I'm going to be in Estonia, you know where Estonia is? <laughs> um, I'm going to lead a, a Mahamudra retreat there, um, which involves shamatha, particularly focusing on the mind, Vipassana, focusing on the mind, and then more Mahamudra instructions. It's going to be an eight-day retreat, I think, from March 5th to 12th. Um, and for European, uh, it's very cheap. And beautiful place in the middle of a forest in the middle of Estonia. Very quiet, peaceful. Um, there's still a few places left, so if anyone's interested, there's a link on my site that gives all the instructions for registering for that. So that's the next retreat I'm doing. And then I've got a schedule for the rest of the next six months at least. So, um, and also on my website, there's a contact page. So if you want, if you want to contact me, if you've got any questions, just send me a message and I'll try and answer any questions that you have. So that's all I uh, wanted to say. So um, thank you for coming. I hope you've made some, got something out of it and I hope to see you again next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.